Hey everybody, it's Kevin from 3D Printed Parts again. In this video, I'm going to show you how I design, printed, and finished the Sawtooth Axe from Fortnite. Again, this is another part in the Fortnite cosplay that I'll be working on. <laughs> Well, right, everybody, uh, thanks for coming back. I really appreciate it. If you like these videos, don't forget like and subscribe. Uh, you can also head over to my Patreon page to get some of the STL files. Uh, this one, I made this file myself, so you can head over to uh, Patreon or go on the link below to sign up to get this file. And this was a real fun one. Uh, I designed this one myself, um, practicing getting um, more and more proficient in Fusion 3D or Fusion 360, and I made this and printed it out. It's in multiple parts. You can download it, download it over on my Patreon site. And yeah, this is the axe I just really dug. I thought it looked kind of cool. I like the, the sort of the weathering on it, and I had a lot of fun building it. And this is, of course, going to go for our Rust Lord cosplay, and this is a pretty important piece. So really excited about it. Let's head over to the workbench. And I'll show you how I, again, designed it, uh, printed it, and finished it. I designed all of the props that I am able to make myself in Fusion 360. So here is the actual model. I don't have a step through because I am not that great at it. So this took me forever. I am getting better, though. <laughs> here are all the pieces, parts, quite a few. Uh, if you download the STL, which you can get over at my Patreon page, there's a, you'll print two of the staff pieces out, unless you want it shorter. So then we go ahead and we start gluing these guys up. And I've noticed that I've been saying we a lot. Uh, it's really just me. I'm not sure why I'm using the royal we. So I'm going to try to say I from now on. So here I am making sure these fins match up because that's pretty important. And so now we're just putting all the pieces. I like to make sure the tops as aligned as possible. And of course, now the staff. Now, yes, the staff uh, part in the actual model on uh, the game is thinner. But if it was too thin, you know, I was worried it would snap. It wouldn't hold very well. So I made it a little beefier. Uh, I think it looks neat. I think it works with the scale of the prop. And of course, here goes Bondo. And this, uh, again, flat surfaces I'm okay with. I can sort of make them look all right. They don't get too weird. So a lot of Bondoing just to cover those seams up and getting them cleaner. The axe blade was a little bit tougher because, of course, you've got to get it Bondo in all those little cracks. But I think I did a decent job. Now, after I Bondoed those areas and sanded them, I went ahead and put on some of the other pieces because I wanted to be able to get into the cracks and crevices so I didn't bondo it all together at once. You can decide whichever one you want to do. So just gluing things on and using the accelerant, uh, way too much of the accelerant as it runs down the prop. Now, of course, we need to do a little bit more bondo work after we finish gluing up the staff. Uh, there's the base part. And I know some of them have uh, has a sword or a knife at the bottom. Uh, I decided not to put the knife and just put this uh, neat little cap because the first versions I saw actually just had this on the bottom. They didn't have a knife. So I went with that. Now what we're going to do is we're going to have to look at this. Yes, it looks like an axe. Chop, chop. And <laughs> we unfortunately have to do some more Bondo work. So we're going to Bondo up the... Um, I guess the axe part, or I don't know what that, yeah, I guess that would be the axe part, and smooth that out as much as possible. Here's the thing. This thing is super weathered. It is an axe. It hits the ground and trees and all kinds of things. So I, I have to be honest with you. I did not, this was great, because I didn't have to kill myself here in making sure everything was sanded, you know, glass smooth like a helmet. I wanted it to show wear. And uh, I'm not using that as an excuse because you've seen with helmets, I can make it uh, very, very smooth. <laughs> but I have to say there was so much surface area on this. I was happy not to have to get super detailed because getting into those little cracks and crevices would have been a big, big pain. Okay, now to get the Bondo smoothed off, what I usually use is a belt sander with various weights. And then of course, I'm also wearing a mask because you don't want to be breathing in Bondo, if you can help it, Bondo dust, I should say. And, and then you should turn it off, it wobbles around. Now, I painted it up at my dad's, 
Uh, and now I'm actually doing, this isn't really weathering, it's, well I guess technically it is, but it's also adding some detail work and weathering because in the axe, in the pictures, it's got those streaks like it's been hitting into things and the paint's been wearing off. So this is what I was telling you about not really going super clean with some of the sanding because it is so gunked up because it's been, you know, what it's used for. It's used to destroy things and wreck things. So here I'm just using uh, some silver paint. I'm also using a little bit of rub and buff to get that sort of, um, you know, scraped look. And I'm hitting the sides and areas like that, like anywhere you would get a lot of wear. And, and then I'm, since I went a little darker with the blade, I'm adding a little bit of silver here and there to give it like a really sort of mottled appearance. And you might be able to notice there's no water on the brush. I'm pretty much just dry brushing it. Uh, I put some <laughs> copper on and I did not care for it and I'm wiping it off. You have to do that really quick. So we're just going to keep weathering every bit of this print. Okay, now that we've added the sort of the detailed weathering, like the little scrapes and stuff, now we're going to go ahead and do what we usually do and sort of brown it up. And you can see I've got some different shades of brown in there, some black. And again, this thing is filthy, right? So I'm really going to gunk this in. There's not a ton of water. Uh, so you can see how thick the paint is and I'm just gonna brush it on and let it sit a little bit so that it has time to sort of work itself in and then I'm going to pat it off with a paper towel again I usually pat way too much and then I've got to sort of go back and add more but you know it's all about layers so I layer it on and this way you know if I want to take something off I can take it off and this took a while because there is again a lot of surface area on this but uh, I really wanted to get this super, super aged and, and beat up. And it was really fun. I, I love this process. I think it's hilarious that as uh, prop builders and, and sort of model makers, we do all this work to make things look super fantastic. <laughs> and then our last step, we pretty much just like make it look like it was run through dirt. But that's part of it. I mean, it isn't a prop. It isn't a real looking prop for what it's supposed to do if you didn't do this. So again, just matting things away or uh, dabbing things away and trying to keep uh, as much paint on as I can so that it looks nice and war, but you know, it's a happy medium. You really gotta, gotta practice and just have fun with it. All right, now we're gonna add the pegs to the base. And again, you know, I just uh, printed those out. Uh, I think it was on the CR10. Again, there's coupon codes for everything in the description below put some glue in there and they were sort of cockeyed in the um, in the reference so I, I sort of made them so that they fit weird and why we're doing this now and not before since we've already aged everything is because I forgot to print them out <laughs> so I just remembered to print them out at that point when I noticed two big holes and there we go so we get our sort of chip brush back out and our black and a little bit of water and we just age those guys up to match the rest of the design Okay, now the reference has some cloth draped around uh, and wrapped around different pieces of the of the axe. It is bluish in the design, but I went ahead and used green. Uh, I just felt like it, and the fact that I also had a green t-shirt laying there that I used for a rag didn't hurt either. So now we're just going ahead and wrapping this around to make sure that it sort of matches the reference trying to think of what I'm watching over there. I think it was a really, really bad horror movie about uh, the some kind of French catacombs. It was bad. And now, of course, we need to weather the actual uh, cloth itself after we add uh, it down to this area. Also, we're going to get some paint, same thing, and just sort of mark that up. Now, there is some string also, like it's a piece of rope or something, but I like the idea of using like a black and red wire. I thought it sort of matched the the um, sort of uh, details, the red in there, and I put a little bit of glue in each one uh, just to make sure in the hole there to hold everything in, just some hot glue. And there it is. Love this print. It's going to go so well with the Rust Lord cosplay. Can't wait. All right, everybody, that was the Rust, not the Rust Lord, it could be anybody's, but it's the Sawtooth uh, Axe from Fortnite. It's going to be part of our Rust Lord uh, cosplay, really excited about. And again, if you're interested in this file, you can have it over at patreon.com uh, slash 
3D printed props or just click in the description below. Again, if you're interested in, in anything that I used to create this, just head over to 3dprintedpropsgear.com or click in the description below. And lastly, you can not forget, hopefully, to check out ZL Tech. Uh, there's a link below with a coupon code. That's what the filament I'm using is. I'm loving this stuff. Printed this entire thing in it. And uh, there's a coupon code for a nice discount in the description below. So, uh, yeah, check out Patreon. Uh, links, those are affiliate links. That helps out the channel. Uh, I buy more filaments, pretty much what I do with it. And I'm really excited how this is coming together. This was a really fun build, and I had a lot of fun weathering this. I hope you liked the video. If you do, uh, please click uh, like and subscribe. Hit that little bell, and you'll be notified you know, the seconds that I upload a video. And I've got a lot of videos coming up. So, again, thanks a lot, guys, and take it easy. Not sure why I did that, put the X like that, but take it easy. Hi ho, hi ho, it's off to work we go. Hi ho, hi ho, hi ho.